Good evening, Philadelphia. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm so blessed to be here. But after that solo, I, good night. See you later. It's always a pleasure to come here to Philadelphia. I actually uh, got my start working with uh, quite a few musicians who came out of Philly. Norman Connors, Gene Carr. And of course, she was from Pittsburgh. She was here a lot. Phyllis Hyman. And, uh, and at the time, I lived up in New York City, so we had a lot of uh, love for the musicians in Philadelphia, which there were so many great musicians in Philadelphia. I want to thank you all for always being there for Marion Meadows over the years. Philadelphia, it's been wonderful to be. Thank you. But we came from a generation that was, uh, and we're still here, so we've heard it all. You've heard it all, you've seen it all. So, it don't make no sense for me to sit up here and play anything for you but Marion Meadows. <laughs> but y'all don't sing all the greats. So I said to the kids, I'm sorry for y'all. I'm sorry y'all didn't grow up when we grew up. I mean, we just get past the genre that we love, you know, maybe whatever that genre was. But then we had so much more. We had, while we had Ohio plays, we also had Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. And, but then while we were listening to Al Green, we were listening to John Coltrane and Miles Davis, so that, that was kind of crazy, wasn't it? So having been a part of that generation, I certainly embraced a lot of the, uh, the styles of the day and incorporated some of that into my own music. And then later on down the line, as I, when I was a music student at Berkeley School of Music, I met Grover Washington. <laughs> He was, he was out in the audience getting ready to do his show next door. This is in Boston. And I was playing with Bobby Humphrey. And Grover, if I knew he was in the audience, I wouldn't play. I wouldn't. Like I said, I was in college. And Bobby Humphrey asked me to come and sit in for a couple nights. And Grover was sitting out in the audience. And later on, he invited me to come down and hang out with him the next day. And I showed up, you know. He said, come on down to my hotel. We're going to go out to lunch. And then I came down, had my horn with me. He said, man, I'm going to give you no lesson. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we're just going to talk. And he told me uh, some things. And he said, man, you don't need to play nothing but what you play from now on. He said, do Marion Meadows and you'll be all right. That's what girl told me. So I took his advice. I certainly miss him. So uh, I'm so proud to be able to be here with uh, the one and only Gerald Beasley, who was in Grover's fans for so many years. So it all comes around full circle, doesn't it? And uh, then there's another story. I'm not going to talk that much, but I just want you to hear this, because a lot of times you guys don't hear these stories. I don't know why they don't do a reality television show for us, because we have, we've got lots of stories. Well, I was in Omaha, Nebraska. Gerald Beasley was playing, and there was a keyboard player playing with Gerald Beasley. I was walking across the grass in, in the wet grass with my brand new boots on. And I said, I gotta get out of this wet grass, but I heard this keyboard player. I walked back across the wet grass, it was him. And I stole him from him, and I hid out the witness protection program from him for years. singers Mesa and uh, on the drums he and I played together for many years he's been playing with Mesa for so many years and, and certainly with everybody in the world so please welcome Timmy Hutton on the drums Timmy Hutton Philadelphia so needless to say we're here to have a good time we hope you're gonna have a good time and let's get busy all right 